Good afternoon, Holly Shields here for Calkine TV with another episode of Executive Corner Expert Talks. Today we have Peter Van Brusham, CEO and Chief Staff of, of Evangelist Tech Board, sorry, joining us today. I hope I've pronounced that correctly, Peter. Van Brukem. So um, it's Brukem. it's okay. A um, bunch of different people in the family pronounce it differently anyway. So. Uh, thanks, thanks for having us uh, on the show. Thank you for joining us and it's a pleasure e-meeting with you. Yes, nice to meet you too. So let's get started and down to it. Tech Board seems to be the directory of Australian startups and young tech companies. What was the inspiration behind forming the company? Oh, this is this is going back a while. Um, so, uh, Tech Board started off just focused on Western Australia, um, and it was basically uh, a platform to help startup and tech companies in WA raise their profile. Um, because going back, uh, well, even even now, uh, resources sector dominates the economy, and uh, opportunities for um, our kids to have high value jobs that are not resources sector with all the, the issues with fly in, fly out, etc. Uh, the opportunities are, are reasonably low. Um, and there's not a lot of investment in Western Australia into startup and tech. And I, I was hoping to um, make a difference there. Um, so we started in 2015. In 2017, uh, we started, um, we went national because we, we realized it wasn't possible to turn tech board into a business just in Western Australia. Um, and we also, well, sorry, another part of the equation, we started off um, tracking data um, so we could publish a ranking of trending startups to get some attention on the companies themselves and onto what we were doing, monitoring them. Um, and we eventually realized that the a component of that which was interesting to, to potential customers was the funding data, so deals data. Um, and the uh, our competitors are mostly US-based uh, and they don't have great coverage of Australia. Uh, they tend to pick up only the really big deals and not um, other stuff that's up and coming. Um, and we've managed to, to find a number of customers that are interested in knowing uh, what's happening that they they um, they can't get from these other platforms or the the other platforms some of them are very expensive um, one of our competitors pitchbook um, well they the subscription rate is is the cost of a small car uh, well not a cheap small car and uh, it's only really enterprise customers that that are, um, uh, pay the subscription rates so we um, you know we price ourselves between the um, the cheapest option um, our data's better though, uh, and the, um, the the premium sort of high-end executive options. Right. So it sounds like there was quite a bit of a gap in the market here. Well, there's a gap in the market, but uh, as they say, is there a market in the gap? Um, we <laughs> um, that our focus um, so far. Well, our, our main customer base so far has been. Uh, government and some corporates and a small number of advisors. Uh, we've been uh, working to to build, well, m well maintain our, our data quality, but deliver it much quicker than we used to. We uh, started off doing three monthly releases, and now we're doing data every month, and we'll um, be, be speeding that up. Um, and hoping to interest uh, both in investors and uh, more advisors uh, in in accessing our data, so we we track it. Uh, well, we, we track uh, all forms of uh, data into startup and tech companies, so I including grants. Apart from R and D tax, because it's only really the public companies that report on that. Uh, we get grants. Any companies going into accelerators, we pick up on. Uh, we do private investments, uh, equity crowdfunding, uh, reward crowdfunding, like platforms like Kickstarter. Um, and we also uh, track public investment um, through um, the stock market, uh, both uh, through IPOs and uh, capital raises. Um, so um, ra raisings by um, 
but in any of the number of forms that, that the companies uh, use once once they're actually on the market. Um, yeah, and, and so we've been uh, we, we've got almost uh, four years data. We started uh, tracking Australia wide first uh, of July twenty seventeen. So we've got uh, another. Well, we're, we're currently uh, doing uh, going through our data for May, and so then we've got June and four full years. So interesting to see how th things have progressed over that period. Uh, there's been you know, a, a lot of shifts I'm happy to share with you. Right, right. Yeah, that is quite a lot. Um, and just the specialised reports, what would you say the significance of those specialised reports that are meant for internal or external use are? Yeah, so um, we we were previously putting a report out roughly every three months. Uh, more recently, uh, that the rate of reporting has, well, sorry, in terms of the the published reports, um, so that we um, we capture all our data and that's available via subscription. Um, we do publish reports which contain an analysis of that data for the benefit of the ecosystem and and uh, players that want to see. Uh, they're not interested in the individual deals, they're just interested in the overview. Uh, so we do an annual report every year um, and we've got another um, report we're working on at the moment, uh, which is uh, looking at funding received by female founders, uh, something that nobody's really tracked in Australia before. Uh, and we, we were commissioned by our, um, our largest customer, which is uh, federal government through the Department of Industry Science. Uh, energy and resources. I always have to think about uh, getting <laughs> that right. Um, and we, we basically went through our back catalogue and identified if any of the companies that we picked up on found uh, picked up funding for had female founders. Whether it was a mixed team or a uh, uh, an individual uh, a um, solely female founded company, and we're continuing to do that for them over the next four years as well. So. That's um, a new bit of data that we're we're putting out there, uh, and we'll be having our, our first report available for that shortly. So, some interesting insights there. Um, and the the other reports we do, um, we'll uh, we we do probably generally uh, moving to two reports a year with because um, um, we've had uh, to focus some energies on on improving. Uh, the speed at which we can get data out to our customers and also some new uh, data products that we're working on. Right, and um, I understand that companies can add themselves to the TechBoard website if they meet the listing r rules. Uh, well, uh, yes, rules? so, so it, well, the, um, you're, you're right. The uh, uh, TechBoard started off as a directory and we've got the directory at the core of all of the data we're tracking. Um, so basically, if we find a funding event for a company and we don't have a profile for them on the platform, we need to create one. Um, and they can be claimed, we don't charge for that. And if a company that is a startup or a young tech company, so that's up to 10 years old, um, is interested in listing on tech board, they have to be Australian. Um, they can just go onto the website and complete um, an online form, submit it, and uh, we uh, try to uh, approve those within a day. Uh, sometimes it's a little longer, um, but it's it's basically uh, startup and tech companies. So we tend not to uh, approve uh, just service providers unless they've got their own technology they're providing uh, their services with. Um, some e-commerce businesses fit the requirements. Others, you know, if it's just a, a simple store that may not, um, but if it's uh, seen as having growth potential, uh, then we'll, we'll uh, certainly include those. And, and a big indicator of that is if they've been able to secure uh, external funding is, is uh, one of the things we look for. Right. And uh, do you think that startup and tech funding in Australia will remain strong despite the pandemic? Um, okay, so the pandemic has been going for a while. Um, and there was initially a lot of um, concern that that would flow through to investment levels. We are seeing impacts, but you have to dig down into the numbers to see that um, because the, the high level numbers are still remaining very strong. Um, some commentators were of the view that 
the uncertainties around uh, the pandemic would play into a, a reduction in investment quite a long way down the track, up to 18 to 24 months. We are seeing uh, much lower levels of uh, early stage investment by angel investors. Um, the March quarter was the weakest we've seen since we've been uh, tracking. Um, but overall levels remain high. Uh, and we also have um, more uh, committed capital in venture capital in Australia than we've ever had before. A lot of that was secured before the pandemic, but we've also seen some of the major funds continuing to raise. Um, and our economy is strong. Um, having said that, a lot of uh, startup and tech companies, um, if they're uh, if they're looking to raise capital, they've got they've got to be targeting not just the Australian market in many cases. And um, you know, we, we've yet to really see how the pandemic plays out there. Um, there's there's different impacts in different places. Um, investment levels remaining generally high, but we're seeing um, lower levels in um, earlier stage, uh, and it seems to have also had an impact uh, with earlier stage female founders as well. Um, but yeah, so, so we, with what we're seeing um, is continued growth at the top end. Um, the bigger deals are getting bigger, um, and, and if you're looking into um, public markets, we're seeing um, what well, both in terms of private investments that's specifically identified as pre-IPO, um, the number of those investments are increasing and they're going up in size, and there are more companies uh, actually getting onto. Uh, we're seeing a growth curve on the number of companies seeking to raise and to go public, uh, and uh, the amount they're raising uh, in going public is also generally increasing. Um, the biggest um, IPO we had uh, was in the sort of startup and tech space uh, was some time ago. Um, we, we haven't included um, companies like uh, Adore in our numbers because uh, that's an older company. Um, but Prosper, I think, is the, the largest one we picked up on and that was previous financial year. Uh, but there are still some, some quite substantial size raises by companies like Airtasker, Airtasker for example. And, and in the private space, Judo Bank is within our numbers and that's, you know, they're, they're raising more and more. Uh, Airwallex also have been going uh, very strongly. Canva, um, and what we're seeing, and that those three companies all have female founders. Um, and what we're seeing in Australia is uh, mixed teams are raising much more at the top end than if you look, say, in the US or the UK. Um, but that's not necessarily flowing down into smaller deal sizes, earlier stage companies. Right. Okay. Well, it sounds like overall there's um, quite a bit of optimism on the outlook. Um, I think there's optimism. Um, we, we haven't seen a recovery in some of the earlier stage investments. Um, and so it, it will be a while before we get to see whether that, you know, whether there is or when, whether there is and when there is a recovery at the earliest stages. Because, um, okay, most uh, angel investors in Australia are, you know, that they, they uh, either a professional person who, who has, uh, you know, surplus money that they want to invest or somebody, usually it's someone who runs a, a successful small business and um, their confidence isn't what it used to be. Um, and so they've got less spare cash to splash around is probably not the right way to say, you know, they make careful decisions still, but they are still, they are still making a punt on early stage technology and their confidence isn't what it was. Um, so yeah, I mean, it's, it's too early to, to be particularly optimistic at the earlier stages, but, um, funding levels overall remain healthy and continue to continue to grow. All right. That does, sound like good news. Well, thank you for your insight. Um, we're pushing the time a bit here, but it's been very great having you, Peter. Thanks for joining us. Uh, thank you for the invite. 
All right, well, it is time to close the show, but stick around for more My Live Market updates.